Hey friends, I've been meaning to make this video for a really long time. I'm sure you've heard the phrase before, the magic is in the mid-range, and you've probably even seen some tutorial videos on YouTube about this topic. And I feel like while this concept is definitely true, I have yet to see a good tutorial on why it's true and a clear set of instructions on how you can focus your attention on the mid-range. This video is gonna change that. If you watch this tutorial all the way to the end, I'm sure that your mixing skills will get a significant upgrade. Let's check it out. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a listen to this mix. This is my latest release as Earthcry, uh, but I've taken all of the EQ off of the master. This is just the pre-master without any EQ on it. What I want you to do is I want you to listen to this mix and then maybe try to think about some ways that you think it could improve EQ-wise. Okay, so maybe you're listening to this and you're like, okay, I, I have a couple ideas of how this could sound better. But maybe a lot of you are like, I don't know how this could sound better. I, I'm not really sure what the moves are to do. And this is the most common thing. A lot of folks will listen to a mix like this and they don't know what could improve. So even if you've been mixing for a while or you're a beginner, you may not know exactly what to focus on because you're hearing too much. Let me go ahead and show you what I mean. So I'm going to turn this uh, group of EQs on, and I'm just going to solo this first EQ, which is the one you're looking at right now. What I've done with this EQ is I have removed everything under 90 hertz, and I've removed everything above 6K. Or in other words, this is essentially focusing on the mid-range, okay? Now, take a listen to the same mix. <laughs> What I've done is I've removed a lot of glitter from this mix. What we're listening to is the stuff that really, really matters. The stuff that everyone's going to hear. And you might be listening to this and be like, well, this is not an improvement at all. And you're right, we've removed a lot of the exciting aspects of this mix. But let me go ahead and validate why this is so important. I'm gonna go ahead and unsolo this EQ, and let me show you these other two EQs. What I've done here is the opposite. Now you're listening to everything under 90 hertz and everything above 6K. If you're a beginner, likely this is the stuff that you're focused on when you're mixing. You're like, ooh, there's not enough bass, or it's not bright enough, or there's not enough sheen on the mix, or it doesn't sound hi-fi because there's not enough brightness. This is the stuff that you get stuck into listening to. And I would argue that this stuff matters way, way less than the mid-range. And I'm going to prove to you why right now. Let's go ahead and listen to just everything under 90 hertz and everything above 6K. Take a listen. I can't even hear the music. I can't even hear the melodic instruments. I can barely make out the bass. All I'm hearing is the hi-hats, right? And I'm hearing some low rumble, okay? That's not music, that's sound effects. This is where the music lives, okay? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna listen to maybe just this part right here. Let's just listen to the part with that kalimba. Yep. Right, so we can hear that kalimba. I'm gonna unsolo this, now take a listen. That kalimba is not even there now. I can't even tell that it's there. But so many people are focused on this and on this instead of this, which is where the music is. Ultimately, if you can get this area to sound good, then it's so much easier to make the rest of your mix sound good. Also, it's so much easier to make good decisions because you're not being distracted by super heavy bass or super bright airy sounds, right? So real quick, if you're struggling with your mixes, I just want to point out that I have a seriously deep and thorough course on mixing and mastering with Ableton Live. This course contains over 25 hours of video tutorials just like this, giving you an optimized and organized curriculum to raise your mixing skills quickly and efficiently. So if you're into my teaching style and you're getting a lot from this video, I recommend that you check out my Ableton online courses using the link up here or down in the description and comments. All right, let's get back to it. Let's go ahead and go even farther and let's start to EQ this while using this EQ here with everything under 90 and everything above 6K uh, taken out of the mix. So let's go ahead and grab an EQ8. And so I'm gonna go ahead and re-engage this EQ right here. So now we're just listening to the mid-range and let's take a listen to this mix. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so now that we've removed a lot of the distracting frequencies from this mix, hopefully now it's a little bit easier to identify how you personally feel this mix could improve. Now we've, we've taken a lot of the guesswork out of the EQ moves that we want to do. 
So to my ears, I feel like this mix has got a little bit of thuddiness to it, right? There's, there's a little bit of mud in this mix. And so there's a couple ways that we could address that. Let's take a listen again. Yep. Maybe something we could do is remove some of that mud by kind of pulling down this area right here. Let's go ahead and take a listen to what happens when I take a little bit of this, yeah, 230 out. Yep, yep, yep. And now I'm going to show you something else. I'm just going to go ahead and A-B that move that I just did there. I'm going to A-B that, and let's listen to the difference that is made in the mix. Yep, yep, yep. Right? So to me, I feel like that's an improvement. But I think because we've got this mid-range soloed, my ears can hear more detail. Therefore, I can get more surgical with my EQ. Instead of just doing this broad cut at 230 and then maybe even making it broader by like pulling my Q down, let's get a little bit more surgical. Let's go ahead and instead, let's, let's take a listen to this mix and see if we can isolate various areas where we feel like this could be better. Yep, yep, yep. So 150 hertz, actually taking um, a solid amount of 150 out at a higher Q setting sounds better to me. But obviously uh, taking this much out, just, you know, I don't need to do that. Let's go ahead and bring this all the way back up and then pull it down until we like it. Yep, yep, yep. So let's go ahead and AB that. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, it sounds like some of the mud has now been taken out of this mix and it sounds a little bit more balanced. So now that we've done that, the mix kind of feels a little weak. So maybe something we could do is add some mid-range back to this to maybe make this sound a little bit better. And so let's go ahead and try to do that by using this, um, this high shelf right here. Let's go ahead and start to bring up the high shelf a bit. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so let's go ahead and AB our whole EQ now. So without this EQ and then with this EQ. Yep, yep, yep. Now, what am I listening for? What I'm listening for is I'm listening for separation of the instruments. I'm listening for clarity. I'm listening for, does this move that I'm making reveal more about the character of the instruments? And that's really what's happening here when I'm using this EQ, okay? So again, listen to, what we're listening for is clarity, okay? We're listening for separation. Yep, yep, yep. Now, I think I'm almost done, but I really feel like there might be one more thing that we could do here that would make this sound a little bit better. I feel like there might be a lot of energy in this area right here. So maybe what I could do is I could bring this EQ right here and pull this one down uh, at around 450. And let's go ahead and listen while we do this. And maybe we'll get a little more surgical with this so that we don't remove some of this vital area right here. Yep, yep, yep. Let's go ahead and A-B that. Yep, yep, yep. To me, this is kind of removing some of that like, oh, kind of vowel sound, the honk from the mix, if you will. So. Okay, so now that we've done this move, let's go ahead and turn off this EQ where we're just isolating the mid band. And let's go ahead and AB this EQ now that we can listen to the full range of the mix. So here's the mix without this EQ that we've made. Yep, yep, yep. And let's go ahead and turn on this EQ now. Right? And you can hear in just this area right here where we've got a lot of that low thuddy synth in the uh, left channel. Take a listen to what happens when I turn this EQ on. Right here, how thuddy that is. Take a listen now.
Thanks to just listening to the mid-range, I was able to identify that with my ears. Essentially what I'm trying to show you is that when I'm using this EQ right here to kind of get rid of all the low end and all the top end, my ear was able to pick out that there was some low mid thuddiness in my mix. And it might not have been as easy to hear that if my ears were being unindated with sub frequencies, right? Doom, 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 doom. I'm not even listening to the low mids because my ear is compromised by listening to those subs, okay? Now to me, this mix is a little bright. And now that I've turned off my mi music as mid-range, I can now simply adjust uh, with a shelving filter up high. And maybe I can pull some of that brightness down a little bit. And I can adjust this because now I can listen for the bright top end, right? N now that I've turned this EQ off and I've done some of my mid-range EQing, this is so simple. It's so simple to just simply turn the brightness down a little bit. Let's go ahead and dial that in. So I'm, maybe I'm gonna pull this back a little bit and we'll listen to everything. Yep, yep, yep. Now, I don't know about you, but that is a significant improvement. I think one final thing to do now that we've revealed all of these other issues is now we can just work on the sub. And again, it's so simple. The low frequencies below 90 hertz are only accounting for a small octave of the listening range of your music. Okay, so it's just as simple as going to this filter down here and using a low shelf to dial in the subs, right? Now I can simply just listen for the sub. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, cool. That was so easy because I'm just listening for the sub, right? So by using this EQ where I'm just isolating the mid-range, I have removed so much of the guesswork from EQing this song. This made this a lot easier for me. I first turned on this EQ to listen to the mid-range, right? And once I got that dialed in, I simply turned this EQ off and then my ears were like, whoa, they were kind of blown away by how much sub and how much top end there was in the music. I'm not saying that this is always going to be the case. In fact, you might find that in your music, you would do the opposite. Maybe you would boost the highs or boost the subs or, or who knows what. It just depends upon what your mix is asking for. But at the end of the day, isolating the mid-range and focusing on the mid-range first is a great way to eliminate a lot of the guesswork when you're just getting started with mixing, okay? Hey, Editor Anthony here, and I wanted to weigh in a little bit on some of the things that I've shown you in this video. First of all, the settings that you would have on any given EQ to listen to just the mid-range are not a one-size-fits-all kind of thing. The reason I've set this EQ up here where I have everything under 90 hertz and everything above 6K set this way is because this is what helps me listen to the mid-range of this particular song. If you find yourself mixing stuff like rock or jazz or something like that, you might find it more useful to set this filter up higher. And the reason that might make more sense is that there's less information down there to get you distracted and that you can kind of more focus on this range, which is more like the true mid range of a jazz or rock mix, right? But in this situation, I have mine set at 90 for a reason. Everything under 90 in this specific mix, where this is sort of like an EDM or like a dance sort of mix, this is where a lot of the rumble is and a lot of the stuff that's easy to get distracted by, right? So in my listening experience for this specific song, I felt like it would make sense to set this here. So to set this up for yourself, I'm just going to collapse these down. Grab yourself an EQ8, drag it in here. We'll turn off the middle two filters. The last two filters we'll put on a slope, uh, low pass slope, and then on this one we'll put on a high pass slope. And then you'll just have to choose what the ranges are that'll help you focus on that vital mid range. And in, in, again, in my situation, I felt like everything under 90 hertz and everything above 6K was the move. And largely, I've taken a lot of influence, at least for the top end, from listening to my mix cubes. The mix cubes are an interesting speaker. It's a really small speaker, and it sounds terrible. <laughs> but the idea with the mix cubes is that if you can, if you can nail the mix uh, in mono on a mix cube, or even in stereo on two mix cubes, likely your music will sound pretty good through any other speaker system. Why would that be? Well... Well, the mix cubes are similar in that around 5 or 6K, they start to slope off and you really don't hear any of the brilliance in the music. And uh, the, the mix cubes can't really uh, reproduce bass this low. Um, really, I think a, a mix cube probably starts to, to, to ramp downwards pretty dramatically at like 300 hertz or 400 hertz or something like that. So you could think of what I'm doing with this EQ8 as sort of like a modified mix cube sort of like response. But the difference is, is that the mix cube is even better in a lot of significant ways. First of all, they don't have any ports and they don't have any crossovers. Uh, when you have a two-way system, like two-way speakers, 
uh, usually the tweeter is taking care of a, a lot of the mid-range and so is the woofer. The woofer is taking care of a significant amount of mid-range. And so what that means is that the crossover is somewhere in the middle. So whenever there's a crossover present in the spectrum, you also have a thing called phasing because the tweeter and the woofer are not the same speaker. So of course, they're, the time alignment of them is not always going to be perfect. Also, there aren't any ports in the mix cubes, meaning that there isn't any sort of bass reflex happening in there, uh, which also can cause phasing issues. So yes, there are significant differences between using an EQ like this and then using a mix cube. But at the end of the day, using an EQ like this or a mix cube, all that matters is that it's helping you focus on the mid-range of your music. So again, if it wasn't clear before, you set this EQ first, right? This sort of like focus on the mid-range EQ, and then you would take another EQ, you know, whatever EQ you use to actually do the business, right? This is where you do the work, okay? Cool, so thanks for watching everybody. If you want to support the channel, you can check out my Ableton online courses. You can also check out my musical projects, Earthcry and Papadocio. All the links for all that stuff is down in the description and comments. Thanks for watching again. I'll see you next time.